What's going on today, guys? Uh, today is a very special day for me, anyways. We're going to be taking a look at my very first guitar that I ever uh, purchased. If you have not kept your first guitar or your first instrument, whatever you play, my question to you is why? Why not? Um, fortunately, I did, and there's a bit of a story behind it, so I figured I'd share that with everybody out there. So, uh, without further ado, this is my Fender Mexican Made in Mexico Strat. It's uh, black and white. And uh, yeah, haven't played this thing in years, and I'll tell you why. But first, the story on it, the backstory. Uh, when I first went to college, I did not know how to play the guitar. I had no interest in learning to play the guitar. I had played classical uh, violin and classical piano for a few years in my early teen years. And kind of, you know, let that kind of fade away. I, I just kind of gave up on it. But again, I had no interest in learning to play any instrument. But I was fortunate enough to have a friend across the hall who had an acoustic guitar. I couldn't tell you what kind it was because at the time I knew nothing about guitars. But uh, he was decent. You know, he played um, he played some Kansas tunes and Boston and stuff like that. Basically classic rock stuff. So all I wanted to learn really was the intro to Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven is my favorite song of any genre, of any era, of all time. It's my favorite song ever. So I figured, you know, I'm sure Greg can show me the first few notes, the opening notes to Stairway to Heaven, which he did. And uh, after I got that down, he started to show me a few first position chords, right? All the basic stuff. I, ju I just got the bug from there. So basically what happened after that was I just started asking him, you know, can I borrow the guitar for a little while, go in my room and just kind of fiddle around and practice. And he was kind enough to let me do that. Uh, who just lets somebody who doesn't know how to play the guitar take their nice, their only guitar and just take it, take it with them and go play it, you know, and ho hope they don't smash it up and crack it and uh, scratch it or whatever. But he was very kind and let me do that often. And, um, you know, eventually it just kind of took hold in me and, it, and, and the bug, you know, I caught the bug and I wanted to learn to play more and more. So... I went to school in Rochester, New York, and there's an awesome guitar store there called the House of Guitars. If you're not familiar with this place, I definitely would recommend to, you you know, if you live in the area, go check it out someday. It's really cool. So I went there it, not knowing what I'm looking for. All I knew is I wanted to buy some kind of cheap electric guitar. I was familiar with what, you know, a Stratocaster shape looked like. To me, that kind of signified at the time that's your traditional shape guitar. You know, if you're looking for an electric guitar, this is what you want. I knew that Hendrix played this style of guitar, so I thought, okay, that's cool. I can't, you know, you can't go wrong if you're gonna play the kind of guitar Jimi Hendrix plays, right? So I go in there not knowing anything at all. They showed me this new series from Fender, which was made in Mexico, MIMs. At, in that year, which was actually, I'm dating myself now, but that was 1990, uh, the fall or winter of 90, that was the first year that Fender had run the series, the Mexican series of Fender Strats. So this was actually the first year that that series ever came out. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't care. All I knew it was a cheap guitar. I think I got it for, I want to say either two or $300. I really don't remember at this point, but I want to say it might have been actually like $200. Of course, this was, you know, a couple decades ago. So, you know, inflation and all that stuff. It, it felt good to me, you know, I thought it played well with my first position C chords and G chords and A minor and all that stuff. So I was like, all right, cool. That's the one I want. I'm taking it. I'm getting it. And lo and behold, you know, years later, now it's 2021, I still have this thing. Never got rid of it. There were years where I didn't play the guitar at all. I kind of put it aside, you know, for no reason. It just, I had other interests or, um, you know, career, you know, life just life goes on. So there's times when you, you put your instrument down for a while and you forget about it before you know it, two or three years have passed and you're like, oh my God, you know, why don't I try that and see if I still know how to do it? So yeah, thankfully I never got rid of this thing. I never sold it, never had to sell it for the money or anything like that. Never lost interest in the instrument completely to the fact that I would want to sell my gear. I know there's some other YouTubers that have talked about, you know, reconnecting with their original equipment as if as in they sold it or they gave it away or they loaned it to somebody and just never got it back. So they had to kind of, you know, track it down. But fortunately, this never left my possession. 
Yeah, so it's been through it's been through a few things. So the reason I have not played it in years now, a few years, is because it's just a mess. Elect the electronics are all screwed up. I used to be a huge, well, I still am a huge uh, Ingve Malmsteen fan. And for those of you that are familiar with Ingve, you know that he's got all that speedy licks and stuff. And he plays Fender Strats. Of course, he plays, you know, vintage ones from the 70s, 60s, and what have you. But I wanted to hot rod it with his set of pickups. I purchased one of the pickups. I think it was this one. I think it was the bridge pickup. They're all single coils, obviously. And I had somebody kind of, you know, some guy that didn't know what he was doing, installed it, made a mess of it, just never set it right. I don't know. It just sounded awful. Uh, the pots are all crackly. You know, they're just rusted out and crackly. They need to be replaced. So I decided, you know, we're going to make this thing a parts caster. We're going to just revamp it completely. I'm, I want to make this thing spec it out, you know, to modern standards. To that end, I've already begun to purchase and um, install a few of the more aesthetic, you know, features that also will benefit, you know, the sound and everything else too. So let's go through some of that stuff real quick. You know, see if you can pick them out before I even mention it. So obviously, the uh, input jack plate, that aesthetically, I just changed it to like a gunmetal because I'm kind of going the gunmetal route on some of this stuff. The... Um, the, the machine tuners I replaced with Goto, Goto locking tuners. Um, these are the typical, these are the same series that you would find on higher end guitars like Ibanez and some others that use Goto. Again, gunmetal. Um, and they even have the staggered posts, which is awesome. So you really don't even need the string tree. I still left the one there, but I might take that out eventually. So I don't think I'm going to need that. Uh, what else do we have here? I'm going to have installed a um, GraphTech Tusk XL uh, nut. you got to get the XL, not just the regular Tusk, because the XL is the one that has the impregnated with silicone or whatever that PTFE stuff is that keeps it consistently lubricated. Uh, the regular Tusk nut does not have that, so if you're looking to get that, make sure you get the Tusk XL. Um, also make sure you get the right size and series for your guitar. So that's going to go in here. I went with the... I stuck with the aged white look for that. You know, you can go white, black, or aged white. I stuck with the aged so it looks a little more, at least some aspect of the guitar is going to look original. I decided I'm going to get some Seymour Duncan single coils uh, with much higher output than what, obviously, these come with. And those probably will be purchased. Well, I'm going to purchase those soon and have the, everything installed all at once. Um, what else did I do so far on this? The bridge saddles, I put updated ones because it came with those cheap little bent, those angled iron ones, or I don't know if they're aluminum or what they are, but they're just real cheap. You know, that's consistent with what's found on a Mexican Strat. So for what, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 bucks, you buy a set of these nice upgraded bridge saddles. I went with uh, just chrome for now. I mean, I couldn't really find gunmetal, and I didn't want black, black on chrome, on the chrome bridge. So whatever. That's fine. Also, I had to get shorter bridge saddle screws because the other ones protruded too far out and they were scratching my hand, you know, for palm mutes and stuff like that. So these are nice and smooth. They're all kind of like recessed. You don't feel them at all. So definitely that's a very cheap, very easy upgrade for anybody with a Fender Strat or, you know, similar guitar, similar bridge. Just get some shorter screws. Just make sure you get the right pitch, the right, you know, diameter, all that good stuff. You got to measure it out. But that was easy. That's probably 5 to $8 on Amazon. Um, at some point in time, I will probably have this neck refretted because these, I believe, are the original frets. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. They're kind of like a medium. I don't even think they're like a medium jumbo. They're just medium frets. And they're really low. I think I had them filed down once years and years ago. But yeah, on the back of the guitar, I changed the springs out. I got those stiffer tension those red ones and I believe I don't know they're supposed to be they're not they're supposed to not ring out as much as the as the uh, stock springs they kind of still do I don't know we'll see and what else um, I intend to get a brass block but I'm also gonna have the um, the bridge not decked blocked 
I'm gonna have the bridge blocked with a piece of wood in there. Just kind of, you know, jam a thick piece of wood so that the bridge can't move at all. I, you know, who uses their stock Fender Strat, you know, whammy bar? Nobody, because it throws it out of tune automatically. As soon as you, you know, unless you're doing the, the most gentle little vibrato with it, it's really kind of useless. So I'd rather have this thing just a hardtail, you know, but I don't want to change the bridge. So I'm just gonna, you know, tap a piece of wood in there nice and tight and firm and just hold it in place. But yeah, this guitar still feels pretty good. Um, the action is decent. It's it's still pretty low, and it stays in tune. I re-intonated it, which it barely needed any adjustment at all, and I haven't literally haven't picked this thing up in at least a year just to even strum it. The like I said before, the tone pots or all the pots actually are just all crackly and they're just shot. So I have new ones also that are going to go in, and I have it all done at once. But I managed to kind of finagle it, so we'll see if we get some sounds out of this thing real quick here. So, what do we got here? I don't know. This thing right now is kind of a train wreck. <clears throat> like I said, it's gonna be a parts caster. I don't really intend to ever sell this thing, so I don't need to keep it in, you know, original condition. I want it playable, I want to enjoy it, the way it looks, feels, sounds. So yeah, upgrading to locking tuners makes sense. Upgrading to a graph tech nut makes sense. Better pickups, pff, that's like step one, right? Uh, new pots, because I've cleaned them out constantly, and they just, they keep crackling, so those gotta go. Got some new ones already. The blade switch, oddly enough, is still good. And uh, yeah, that's it. There you go. So this thing is pretty light. It's not too light. It's just got a decent, moderate, you know, weight. It doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. And I've never had issues with this thing going out of tune, which is so funny because this is absolutely my cheapest guitar of all the guitars I own. I knew nothing about fret sprout, you know, about fret wear about the different types of necks, uh, woods that are used for necks and bodies and stuff like that. When I purchased this, I knew nothing about guitars. I just knew that this thing looked cool. And I'm like, I gotta have Jimi Hendrix guitar. So that's it right there. And it's 200 bucks or whatever it was. And you know, the rest is history. So I am so thankful that I kept this thing all these years. And for a lot of years, it sat in the case in my closet. I didn't even play the guitar for years and years and years, but you know, I came back to it now full force, and I am so glad that I have. And it's just a wonderful thing to have the first instrument that you ever played or that you learned on, you know, whether it's a guitar or whatever it might be. You know, your first amp, your first drum kit, I don't know, your first bass. Um, if you don't have your first instrument, you know, do you miss it? You know, do you, do you have any regrets for selling it, losing it, uh, loaning it out, never getting it back? Do you have regrets? Do you not really care because you don't miss it? You know, maybe it was a cheap piece of junk and didn't matter anyways to you, never play it again. But let me know, you know, what are your thoughts on your first instrument? You know, what are your thoughts on keeping something just for posterity's sake, just for the sentimental value of it, right? This means this thing is worth way more to me than the $200 I paid for it. I mean, this thing, you know, I cherish this thing just like I do my $1,000 plus guitars. I'm, I don't know what to say. It's just awesome to still have this thing. It's, you know, it's a blast to pull it out and just look at it and check it out, right? It's the only guitar I have like this. But, you know, it's going to be really cool when it's all done. And we'll update. We'll do a part two to this whole video. And, yeah, you guys will get to see what it looks and sounds like when it's all done. It's going to be kick-ass. I can tell you that right now. So, you know, stay tuned. I'll probably have that done in the next month or two maybe you know if i get around to it i've got a lot of other stuff going on at the same time try to get this done yeah in the next month or so that that's the goal anyways we'll shoot for 30 days i don't know we'll see what what happens but yeah let me know what your thoughts are um give me a comment tell me this thing is ugly and you can't stand it, it sucks maybe you hate fenders maybe you hate strats i don't know or maybe that you know 
Maybe you used to play them, or your dad did, or you know, your sister, or whoever plays guitar in your family. Maybe somebody else used to play it, and you picked it up, and you gave it a whirl, and you were like, oh, wow, this thing is pretty cool. It's just so easy to play, you know? It's got a decent, it's got that modern C neck. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. It's just comfortable. What else can I say? Glad I have this thing, man. It's pretty sick. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll get back together real soon on this one. This is definitely going to be a fun project to work on. And uh, yeah, we'll see what it looks like in a month. I don't know. Hopefully it's done by then. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, talk to you soon, guys. Stay safe, as always. I always say that, right? Stay safe, stay healthy. Wash your hands. Do whatever you got to do, man. Just, just get it done. Just stay healthy. And you know what else? See ya!